Hi, welcome to the SAG After Foundation's Conversations at Home. I'm Janelle Riley from Variety. The SAG After Foundation has a COVID-19 relief fund to support SAG After artists during this global pandemic and industry shutdown. Information on how you can support this effort can be found in the description of this video. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Shorey Agdashlu. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Anna. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time. <laughs> Any time. Um, this is primarily audiences of SAG-AFTRA, actors who watch these, so I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? <laughs> With my first film, House of Sand and Fog. <laughs> you know, I, I still to this day can't believe that that was your first movie because I know you had worked in theater for so long, you were a highly respected actress, and then your first meet, you get an Academy Award nomination. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> well, um, I, would, I almost waited uh, 30 years for it. I was 51 years old when I was nominated. Really? Yes. I, mean, I know we've talked about this before, but had you tried to get into movies before, or were you just happy doing theater? And, um, back in Iran, I was a movie star at the age of 20. When I started, I started with theater. But then soon I was discovered by the renowned uh, director, late Abbas Kiar Um His film brought me to cinema, to the Soviet screen. As, as of then, I did uh, a couple of movies in Iran. Uh, only two of them survived. Uh, two of them uh, were lost. One of them was found in a knick-knack shop almost uh, a couple of months ago. A film that was lost for 42 years. And the director's uh, grandson found it in a secondhand shop. Uh, they have spent thousands of dollars on it uh, to um, uh, bring it to you know today's uh, uh, sort of uh, quality, uh, Blu-ray quality. It's an epic, and uh, they are showing it now. They have already shown it at the New York Film Festival, where it received amazing reviews. London Film Festival. And they are going to also show it uh, amongst the 25 uh, international classic films at the Cannes Film Festival this year. Wow. What's so it called? you can imagine. Look for it. It is called, it is called uh, The Chess Game of the Wind. Wow, that's a great title. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's really interesting. I never, I, I never got a chance to see the... the finished the movie because right after it was finished uh, it was only shown at the, an Iranian film festival once and then it was confiscated and censored so but during the right after the revolution when the mobs attacked the house of cinema or they, they destroyed many films this one was told to be one of them but it survived that's amazing yeah. um when you came to America, did you think about auditioning for movies here? Or were you... I did. Uh, you did. Yes, I was very excited. To be honest with you, I started with theater. But then a friend of mine who was pretty active in the American television, um, acting, you know, to, in series, uh, he was doing great. And he said, I should also start doing auditions and start working in the industry in the U.S. because I deserve it, he said. And I started, I went to my first audition and I was so <laughs> upset with the first one because as soon as I stepped in, uh, the young lady looked at me, the casting director, and said, oh no, go home. Oh no, you're too beautiful for this role. We're looking for a downtrodden uh, Middle Eastern woman. You're not that. Go home. I was so furious. I was, it was, I was offended. I was thinking, woman, why can't you think that I can act? Mm -hmm. That I don't have to look pretty, you know? But and I didn't have any makeup on, you know. But I, I got, I got her point. Second one, uh, they were having me uh, portraying a terrorist on the plane, asking everybody to shut up because they were going to kill them. As soon as I started acting, the two casting day. There's this time there were two of them. They were like, oh my God, what's that? Is that for you? Oh my God, what have you been through? And I'm like, well, you asked me to portray one and this is how it works. And they were like, oh. and I'm thinking, you're auditioning for something that you have no idea. Yeah. 
So that's why I came home and I told my husband, I said, look, the American industry is not ready for us. It's about the girl next door. And certainly, I'm not the girl next door. So let's concentrate on our place. He wrote, directed a couple of plays. We managed to gather our own group, which I jokingly call them our Ingmar Bergman's group. And we kept just performing uh, around the world, except for the Middle East. And uh, with our first play, we bought a house in Los Angeles. So. But it took us, uh, it took me for t- another 15 years to join the industry. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm so glad they found you. Was it, I believe it was Deborah Zane who tracked you down for House of Santa. That, that's right, yes. Uh, they, I, I told her I would love her for the rest of my life from here to eternity for what she did. After going through uh, with uh, a lot of auditions uh, that Vadim Perman, the director of Legend, told me that they were mostly housewives and some Iranian singers, he still... The director was not convinced. He kept asking, I want an actress to play this role. So Deborah Aikila sent her employees to Beverly Hills and Westwood, to the Iranians who have stores there, have businesses there, and asked them who their favorite actress was. And they all gave her my name, but with different spellings. That's why when they called, they were asking for, uh, can I talk to Surya Abida Surya? And I said, I'm sorry, that's not my name. And the lady said, whatever your name is, would you like to come down and sort it out? Come to where? Doing work regarding House of Sun and Fall. Um, so now for four seasons, you've started on The Expanse, um, playing a UN Deputy Undersecretary of Executive Administration. And you have a fifth season coming in December. I actually want to go back to the beginning and, and ask what initially attracted you to the role of Christian and the project specifically? It's, Danelle, this one is very exciting. <laughs> uh, ten, 10 years prior to that, or, or a couple of years prior to that, I met with Mark Osby and uh, <clears throat> Mark Ferguson and Hawk Osby, the, creator, the creators of the show. Back then, there was nothing about the show. We just, it was at the Palm Springs uh, Film Festival. We had a lot of fun. And uh, we talked a lot, and they told me, sorry, we have to work with you. We have to find a story and uh, start working with you because we feel like we owe this to you. And I kept uh, asking, you know, uh, thanking them um, um, for, for having me in, in the American film industry. And they said, no, 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 we have to do something for you. A couple of years later, uh, Hawk Osby called me from the Yellowstones. He was with his family. Uh, they, they were taking a vacation and he said, right now, Mark is at the NBC. Uh, we have, we, uh, I know that you need to read your materials. You never accept a role without reading the script. That I know of, but I tell you what the story is, what your character is, because I need your answer now. Mark is at NBC. And our only condition for this series is that you play Abu Sarala. NBC is asking whether has she accepted the role yet? They need to know. In 10 minutes, he told me the story. I said, Mark, I love your penmanship, uh, Hawk, uh, and your penmanship. I love the Iron Man. I love the children of man. Uh, for the first time in my career, I am doing this because I want to work with you two. You're so visionary. You're so creative. And... I love working with you. That's how I had not even read it, but he told me the story and I fell in love with the story. So there was no hesitation about committing to a series because you're you're very busy. Not really, because uh, to be honest with you, the uh, subject matter, being international, being so versatile and uh, being so relative. When he told me the story, I was like, are we talking about today? He said, no, we, we started writing these novels. Uh, the writers, uh, the novelists, uh, Ty uh, and, uh, and Daniel, uh, Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham, uh, the, the visionary man who wrote these novels, started writing them 20 years ago. And I think, I told him, it's like it's been written today. It's so relative and timely. 
And I, I just couldn't say no to it. I knew it was going to be uh, sort of time consuming, wouldn't allow me to do as many independent films as I would love to do, because it's really in the independent films that actors like myself get to uh, do the roles that they like or say something meaningful and try to be uh, useful and, and, you know, for the subject matter to be profound. I knew I was not going to be able to do that as much as I wanted to, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to think. I mean, um, this is set. This is the sci-fi genre. Um, I know, obviously, you did an X-Men movie, but do you have much experience with science fiction? Not really. No. Uh, my first one was uh, Flash Gordon back in Iran, <laughs> almost 50 years ago. Uh, the series was made in Germany. It was, was limited. It was like only 52 uh, segments, episodes, and that was it. Uh, after that, yes, X-Men, uh, but. Uh, to be honest with you, I started watching uh, science fiction movies when I left Iran, more than when I was in Iran. And now my favorite is Matrix. I have watched that film at least 10 times. First three times, I was trying to understand what was going on and then trying to decode what they're trying to say. And then, of course, my, one of my favorite actors of all time, Keanu Reeves, whom I've been always jealous of him for doing this film because I would have loved to be a part of Matrix. So well, keep making more. Yeah, that's it exactly. That's what I'm hoping for. So I can say that, uh, and it, it, um, I do believe that watching science fiction movies, you need to develop a taste for it. And uh, what what I I didn't do back in Iran or my parents didn't, but I have seen enough uh, films and read enough books now to say that I am interested in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you end up reading the books for The Expanse? Did that help inform I, your character at all? There's so many. Not, not, not The Expanse books, no. Uh, I bought the first two and I started uh, reading them. All of a sudden it dawned on me, what if I find out about her future and I start acting differently? What if someone in real life today tells me you're going to die in a month? Obviously, all my actions are going to change. Mm -hmm. And I decided to treat it as uh, like the unknown piece of the future. And just just uh, stay with her uh, and, and um, take the trip with her without even trying to find out what's going to come out next. That would make her actions more justifiable and more authentic rather than knowing what's going to happen in the future. How else did you go about preparing to play this role? I, I'm, I'm curious if, you know, if she's anything like you and, and which do you find harder, playing someone who's sort of close to you or playing someone completely unlike you? I was fascinated by Margaret Thatcher in her inauguration speech. Uh, I was in the UK, I was at the Bruner University. Uh, I heard a stampede and I thought there was a revolution in the UK, but all the students were going to the canteen to watch her talk. I followed them and she said, I've heard the rumors. They call me an iron lady. I am an iron lady. Tighten your belts. We are going to change Britain for good. And I was, oh my God, I want, I want to be here. I want to follow her up. So that's why I was going to study art, but I changed it into political science, international relations, and I got my BA in 84. And I wanted to be a, a, a politician more than anything else. I didn't want to act. I, I even signed up for working at The Guardian, my favorite newspaper. And they told me, sorry, you have to start from the basement, putting the newspapers, the, paper, you know, the pages together. I said, I don't mind. I will start from wherever, from the bottom, to get up and to talk about Iran and its revolution and try to help my people in every which way that is positive. Mm -hmm. um, we have to talk about the, this amazing ensemble because over the years, The Expanse has just had an excellent cast, you know, from Thomas Jane to Stephen Strait. Uh, who are some of your favorite scene partners and, and what's it like getting to, you know, show up every day and work with this amazing ensemble? 
Well, I have to tell you, um, just a, you know, a routine day. I wake up at 5 a.m. and I have half hour to have a coffee and get down. Uh, the driver is waiting for me at 5.30. I get there quarter to six. It takes two, two, almost two and a half hours, two hours and 15 minutes, hair and makeup. And then we start working, all of us. Uh, we are so lucky that uh, our team, they're all actors who believe in interacting. It is so hard to work with an actor who just comes dashes in with his entourage, acts out, and then dashes out. No interaction. It makes it hard for the actors who are trying to interact and make it more authentic, if possible. So therefore, well, actors like myself find substitutes for them. When they're not willing to interact, I find a substitute for them and I do my job. But thank God, all our actors, the principals, they're all into interacting. And I have enjoyed working with each and every one of them. Let me start with Sean Doyle, amazing actor, uh, secretary and Wright. The day I was scolding him as Abba Sorhala, I never forget his face. It was pale, and I could hear his teeth going, <laughs> So on? Are you afraid of me? Because honestly, when you started shouting, I lost it. So, uh, amazing, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Strait. Oh my God, was it such a uh, such a in, um, introverted uh, actor uh, that interacts brilliantly. And Dominic Tipper, Miss Dominic Tipper, on the other hand, love my scenes with her. Bobby Frankie is like my daughter. She is almost the same age as my daughter. She's younger than my daughter. And she looks a little bit like my daughter. So every morning when I go to the trailer, which I'm afraid I can't do anymore, I kiss her shoulder and I say, I'm so happy you're here, my love. I'm so happy. I think Abasarola has the same feelings for her. Every time I try to channel myself into Abasarola's life, I feel like, my God, Abasarola loves Bobby for the fact that she thinks that she, Bobby reminds her of her younghood when Amasola was her age, a soldier that does not leave her boots anywhere. She's always in her boots like Amasola. So, uh, my God, where's Chatham? Day one, we started working with each other. We were like, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this so much. It was all, not only the interacting, but also realizing all the innuendos here and there. And uh, I remember at one point, <clears throat> the director told me, sorry, you don't know that he knows that he knows that you don't know. And I'm like, okay, got it. I was a bit lost here. But honestly, I cherish those moments. Yeah. It, we are so lucky to know. And we are... We are good people. We keep thanking um, the universe, the good energy, the God, whoever, whatever we believe in for bringing us to this TV series. The cast, the crew, the production is unbelievable. And ever since we have joined Amazon, I'm in cloud nine because all my people can watch it now. I don't have to tape it and send it to my brother. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, it's, and I received messages from Iran now who are watching this TV series. One of them said uh, uh, a couple of months ago, he said, Mrs. Delta Show, I love the expanse. And why do I feel like I am uh, calling you uh, uh, from Eris? And I said, uh, uh, and I won't be able to see you again. And I said, no, we're not going. You're not in Eris. You're on Earth, and we are going to see each other again very soon. Be positive. It's like, oof, sometimes I feel like crying when this happens. So, it's unbelievable. Oof. Apart from having to get up at 5 a.m., what's the biggest challenge of playing this role? For me, the biggest challenge was the uh, interrogation scene. Mm. In real life, I am very much against uh, torture. Uh, interrogations that are involved with, um, you know, uh, hitting and, you know, and psychological tortures and stuff. In general, I'm, I'm against that and I'm against uh, uh, capital punishment and uh, portraying a character who's trying to find out um, what is going on uh, uh, with, with the earth and 
has to interrogate this young man who's been nailed to the wall was the hardest scene I've ever played in a, in a series or in a movie. Wow. Really? Speaking yeah, of... It was very hard. I mean, you've done so many genres and roles on stage and screen. What's been your most challenging role overall? The most challenging roles are the roles that are not... Uh, that are not very... Like, um, that are... All the roles that I don't have much in common with. Uh, when, 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 when I'm offered those roles, I love them because I remember I was offered to, to play an American doctor on, uh, on a TV series. And I loved it. And my name was Catherine. I called the um, writer and I said, thank you so much for giving me this role as an American. And my name is Catherine. So, uh, I love to play those roles, you know, that not necessarily are close to my heart. And you've also done a lot of different mediums. You've done theater, TV, movies. Do you have a favorite? Not really. Ever since I was five years old, I wanted to act. Uh, at our parties, gatherings back in Iran, uh, they would bring me in after lunch and they say, let's show her entertain us now. Okay, uh, do Anka. Hussein, now do mommy, do daddy, do this, do that. So ever since I was five years old, I've been acting. Uh, so it, the medium, cinema, television, theater, uh, street uh, plays, it, it won't make a difference to me because what I act for is, is for the sake of, sake of acting. Wow. Um, I'm curious, when was the last time you were able to get on stage? Because you've been so busy with the TV show, obviously, but, but other things as well. Um, when was the last time you got to do a full run of a play? Well, the very last time was in the UK, which six months, one of my best, best part of my life, uh, where I portrayed uh, Bernardo Alba. In, in, in Garcia Lorca's play, The House of Bernardo Alba, at, e, uh, at the Shakespearean Theatre, Almeida, uh, for two and a half months. Uh, all sold out, all days uh, of the week, uh, including two matinees on Wednesdays and Saturdays. That was, I, I spent six months on that because first we had to uh, start. Uh, you know, doing the rehearsals, uh, to, throughout the rehearsals, we learned a lot about Garcia, Lorca, and finally, after four months, we went on the stage for two and a half months, and I still cherish the memories of that, of that, uh, of that play on the stage. People loved it, British people loved it. We even had uh, uh, Garcia Lorca's uh, nephew, uh, came all the way from Barcelona with his wife and children to see the play. And he was in his uh, 80s. And he told me that in his dreams, uh, Garcia told him that go see this play. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, that performance, I'm very proud of that. It's like a badge of honor for me. That performance received tons of amazing reviews from, from prestigious uh, outlets in the UK. But that was, I think, was it 2008? 2013. Oh, okay. So it, it's, it hasn't been that long, but uh, would you like no, to get back on really. stage soon? I would you love to. <laughs> I would love to. I, we did a play um, with uh, Meredith Streep and Marshall Gay Harden. It is called The Seven uh, in New York. It was only for one night. Uh, I wish that we could bring this play back to the stage. Um, I should note, by the way, that Amazon is launching season five of The Expanse on December 16th. Um, can you tease anything that we can expect for your character this season? Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. It's just, it's, all I can say about this is that, honestly, this one, Blew, blew my mind when I watched it. What I have already watched the first two. After it was finished, I congratulated my, uh, of, of course, my colleagues. We were all hugging each other, uh, you know, congratulating each other for such 
amazing performances. But then I kept saying, CGI, fantastic CGI, best CGI ever, CGI, thank you, Amazon. <laughs> wow. Every episode is like a movie. Oh, I can't wait. Um, Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I'm just sort of asking people, you know, during this, this strange time, luckily a lot of us are able to get back to work, but what has sort of kept you going through the pandemic? Were there movies or TV shows or books that particularly... All, entertain- all, of, the ab- all of the above. It's interesting. When, when we were told that it was by the end of February that it's serious and we really have to stay at home, I started thinking, okay, because uh, since, you know, my mind is pretty political, having left the revolution behind, I sometimes think that, uh, what if they capture me, you know, you know, that sometimes they do that, they capture you and take it back to you and put them in a cell. And I, every time I read a, I also biography by one of these people, artists, uh, scholars who've been to the notorious Iranian uh, prison, I think, what are we going to do? It's, they're all saying it's only six feet by six feet. Okay, I know what to do. I would start building my body and I would start uh, writing stories in my mind. And because I don't have a pen and pencil, I would memorize them while I am doing push up uh, and uh, trying to build up my body. So, <laughs> with that mentality, as soon as it started, oh, okay, what are other people doing? I just like myself, let's think about a star, let alone me. Let's think, think about what the stars are doing. Mm, they have to bloom their house now. They have to take care of their own chores now. Let's start. So I brought them off. I wore my dress, uh, the uh, beautiful gown that I wore in uh, House of Sand and Park, the wedding. I wore that one <clears throat> with my uh, gloves, long evening gloves. And I started mopping. And I took a picture of myself. And I posted it. I said, <gasps> Welcome to the new uh, world. Uh, let's get used to it. As of then, uh, I've been trying to stay with my fans, people who are interested in um, uh, sort of uh, um, joining a forum, uh, either be it social or political, or uh, you know, talk about uh, the new normal. So I've been very active <coughs> with social media um well i want to thank you all on behalf of all the sag after foundation artists for uh sharing your stories with us today i want to remind everyone they can check out season five of the expanse starting december 16th on amazon i cannot wait to see what happens me neither honestly i'm dying to see it and all i I have to say is uh please watch season five uh and see how avasarala will make you feel proud of herself. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yes. Thank you I so much. I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenna.